Right guys, well, it's been another year. It's almost the same spot about a year ago, maybe about 10 feet over. Yeah, when we're I over met there. this fine gentleman, <laughs> Francois, how are you, sir? Good to Very see you Very good, again. always good. It's always good a to pleasure see you too. to come and see you. Um, did one of my first interviews actually with you uh, from the Model 3 show, so I appreciate that. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Always. I've talked a lot about the LEAF, so I, we don't necessarily get, need to get into the E-plus and what's going on, but what I wanted to get your perspective is a couple of things. First of all, you guys came out with the RC, number two, if I remember, in the world that you guys have here. Yeah, it's uh, the the RC number two. We have six of them. You have six, and of them, number okay. two yep. right here behind us yeah. is uh, is is the one that uh, we will keep in uh, yeah. in Canada. Nice. And what's cool about it is it's got a lot lot of the components that you'll find in your everyday leaf. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, exactly. Just to take a step back, which is interesting when you build a a, a race car, right? You take uh, you want to take a Maxima or 370Z, which is a good example, or a GTR, and you modify the car. Uh, around inside, uh, modify the engine and everything you built around it. Well, for this, it's the other way around. We took parts, f stock parts from the Nissan Leaf. Um, uh, so the motor, the inverters, uh, and uh, the battery, the 62 kilowatt battery, and we built the car around it. So this is a, a full uh, monocoque uh, carbon fiber uh, body. Okay. And built the frame, everything, uh, yep. and everything around it. And so we built a race car. So it's totally the the, the reverse, which f for us is quite interesting. It was such an interesting project for the Nismo team uh, in Japan and, and Europe to build this car. It's really a project where uh, you see engineers having fun, right? Uh, and again, uh, kind of here's some money, go yeah, have fun, build something, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, but but it's at the same time extremely serious yes. because this is our vision yeah. for now and, and uh, our, our, uh, the, the, the future mm -hmm. of where we want to go. It's our passion and vision for electric cars. Mm -hmm. Um, again, it's for, for our ultimate vision is mm -hmm. zero uh, fatalities and zero emissions. Yeah, I caught that so, tagline in Detroit, which I thought was the first time I actually heard that. So that was awesome for you guys to come up with that. Yeah. I'm very passionate about safety and about but what electrification and what the technology that's coming, not just in EVs, but in cars in general, can help solve. And uh, yeah. you know, certainly uh, with EVs, it seems to be coming faster. Absolutely. And and with with what we're, we're seeing here behind us, this is our expression of our, our, our passion for racing passion for putting uh, the electric car out there, saying, hey, we can race these cars. Mm -hmm. They could be extremely quick, extremely powerful. And right on, on the side, I don't know, you, you guys can't see it, but right right, uh, right beside the Leaf and more see here, we, we put the, the Leaf Plus. Yes. So that's the expression of our everyday electric car. Mm -hmm. So you get perfect balance. You go out, you know, go uh, skiing, oh, you take the Leaf Plus. Mm -hmm. You go on a track, this is the car. There you go. <laughs> so it's, you know, perfect, uh, perfect balance here. And, uh, and we really want to show uh, both both visions here, and in terms of the car, um, so we got two stock uh, Leaf motors. Okay, these are the 150 okay. kilowatt motors. Um, so they put uh, yeah from the e uh, correct. Yep. Uh, again, it's the same motor, right? Yep. They all have the same motor, 40 and, and 60. It's just software oh, okay. update to, to make it at uh, 160. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. So that's uh, that same new? motor. That's the okay. key thing is yeah. when when you want to modify and increase yep. power on a motor, uh, well. It's, ah. it's, it's not, you're not polishing the cylinders, right? Or you're not putting a turbo, it's, it's yeah. software, right? So the, to, to the ultimate capacity too. of that particular mortar. For sure. So it makes it extremely simple, extremely quick. Okay. And, and uh, you can change a lot of things as well. So the front end and the back end uh, system and, and mortar is the same on, on this car. So mm -hmm. you have two mortars. All wheel drive, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, 161 horsepower at the back, 161 at the front. And so torque? three 322 total horsepower. Wow. Yep. And a torque, very important. Yep. Um, 472. Wow. So foot pounds of torque. It'll go. So it will go. And due to the fact that it's all carbon fiber and uh, a really a, a true race car, it's uh, 1,220 uh, kilograms. Yeah. So really cut cut a lot of weight with uh, with the carbon yeah, fiber. Uh, we were at an event last night uh, that Nissan put on for some media, go-karting kind of fun thing, where they actually revealed this. And I had an opportunity to climb into it. Um, you know, I'm not the skinniest guy on the planet, so I did have to kind of nudge myself in. Uh, but all carbon fiber, you know, very. You can see the lightweight materials on, in those. You know, the detachable steering wheel, all that stuff for, for racing. So yeah, absolutely, I, 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 this guy. We were electric go karting, right? 100% uh, electric. This guy is quick. I did okay. Oh yeah. I did okay. Seriously, yeah. that was uh, impressive. I, it, you were representing the EV community I perfectly was. by. Right. 
you know, kicking butt during the, these didn't races. Didn't win the whole thing, but I did <laughs> win the, the group that I was finished in. But no, seriously, so you, you were quick. You pretty, were quick. It was fun stuff. Absolutely. You know, on the way home, I had this urge to kind of, I had to really ease off. <laughs> it was hard. Really, you're on the yeah, edge, yeah, yeah for sure. Doing those turns. <laughs> well, you know, it's great to see, um, you know, everyday stuff kind of being put into the racing. We know a lot of manufacturers do that. Um, in Detroit, the, the, the announcement about you know eight more models by 2022, you know the zero emission, zero fatalities. I think it's all great. That was coming from Nissan. What else can you add from a, from a Canadian perspective uh, as far as where you're going from electrification on there? Yeah, well, we talked about it a little bit when uh, we were together in Ottawa, and uh, yes, it's uh, it, the number is still right. Uh, with the Alliance, it's 12, for example, uh, mm -hmm. by 2022, uh, and uh, specifically eight for uh, for Nissan. Uh, the question is always, okay, w what are we gonna actually bring uh, to Canada, uh, depending on the market market needs, uh, uh, all the cars that we had, for example. The selfie in um, in uh, in China. In China, that's right. Uh, yeah. Exactly, and uh, we, look like a center platform. Yeah, uh, maybe, correct, and there's yeah. a leaf as well. Yes. So th there's a lot of product that we can uh, that we can look look at, but uh, it, it's uh, it's a little bit too early to, to say, hey, we're going to bring this spe specific uh, okay. specific platform for mm -hmm. Canada. Uh, but again, as you you, you saw in the, the past year, we launched the IMX mm -hmm. platform for yep. crossover. Yeah, we launched the excited. IMX uh, IMS mm -hmm. <laughs> sedan platform, mm -hmm. uh, which you saw. Um, so we have both platform. Uh, so you know where we're going. Uh, I don't even need to present it to you, That's, yeah. which is beautiful. But exactly. uh, yeah. That's so really oh, but we, we, I forgot to tell uh, something uh, key about yeah. this car. Probably everybody's just going to ask the question: the zero to hundred. What is zero to hundred? <laughs> so zero to hundred is an impressive three point four. Three point four. Wow, that's pretty quick. So that's how and, the quality is. And this, you're going to be um, do, as a um, uh, lead car for the uh, Micra Cup series in Canada. Is that correct? That yep. is correct. So with two, 2019 car, yep. um, season, so the fifth season of the Micra Cup, Great. Uh, we'll have that as a pace car, and we'll do some hot laps with the journalist. Um, nice. So drill, really Ooh, to I show look it. Look forward to that. Yeah. No, it's uh, it's going to be a uh, quite. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, we'll do, and yeah. uh, and again, I don't know if I, I told you, but again, it's the same 62 kilowatt battery that we're using okay. on, on this vehicle, so it's uh, it's it's good, it's good test uh, for for us as well. A good point you mentioned about the battery pack, and one quick question that I failed to ask, I think Brian, when I was down in Detroit, your counterpart, um, the 40 to the 62, obviously a few more cells, a little bit different packing arrangement in, in a very similar space. The welding, the, the welding as well is, um, uh, changed. Okay, the um, welding so changed. There's a lot of there's packaging, yep. uh, the way it's, the modular design okay. and stacked in the car. There was some dead yeah. space yes. in that uh, bathtub per se, yep. lack of a better word. Yep. Uh, uh, so the bathtub is pretty much uh, the same, mm -hmm. uh, but there's some dead, dead space. So the way that we okay. stacked it, the way that we uh, designed the module yep. and, and the welding actually, the, okay. te the welding technology that we use uh, makes it that. It's, uh, it's uh, the pack. Uh, the pack is almost yeah. the same size. It's a little yeah. bit bigger, but it's it's the same. The actual same pack uh, for uh, the 62 kilowatt vehicle. Yeah. Um, so we've uh, adjusted the suspension. Uh, the vehicle mm -hmm. is a, a little bit higher, mm -hmm. but the ground right. uh, um, clearance that, that is weight, a little bit yeah. uh, okay. is a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. So, um, but in terms of if you see it, you don't you don't see that that variance at all, okay. uh, which is great. Like yes. the fact that you, you 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 can really not modify the whole car um, going from. 40 to 62. Right. Uh, any chemical changes to the cells, or are they still the same cells that, that are in the 40? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's same, the same. Same um, chemistry from that, and still AES, uh, AESC at this point. Lithium, uh, manganese, cobalt, yes. and yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Good memory. Yeah, you still got it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Excellent. And uh, one last question. So we're looking at the RC version of the Nis uh, the, the Leaf Nismo. But I do know in Japan they've come out with the street legal version of the Leaf Nismo. <laughs> Any chance of that coming to Canada? Are you are you trying to bring one in or, or bring um, something to sell? Yeah, it's, it's it's something that we always discuss yes. uh, to to see what we can uh, bring to the U.S., bring to the yep. Canadian market. Uh, I saw it in Japan last uh, last year. It's really nice because it, it looks exactly like uh, uh, like an Nismo version of uh, the GTR mm -hmm. and the 370Z. Like all three cars right. looks. Really, same really color similar. Palette, same yeah, ex cues, exactly. Yeah. The, the the rims and everything. Yeah. So it's it's nicely done, um, but there's no plans for now to bring okay. it to Canada. But again, it's uh, I, we never put a, a cross on uh, okay. on it for North America so things uh, yet. Could change and maybe could, a limited run or something like that. It could uh, it, it could out. change, uh, okay. and uh, it's it's just we just launched the scar, so it's just a question of yeah. okay, what's what's next for for the Nissan Leaf, and there's always uh, things we can do. One last question about the E Plus. Um, 
any idea from uh, de uh, when they're going to start hitting dealerships, uh, dealer showrooms, and any ballpark pricing yet at this point? <laughs> um, I got to ask, folks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> pricing was approved. Yeah. Um, so I'm a little bit less uh, stressed, yeah. um, but uh, a lot of work. Um, but uh, it will be uh, pricing will be uh, launched later okay. um, in the next few weeks. Okay. Uh, so not, not not too far away. And for uh, deliveries in Canada specifically, it is going to be in the spring of 2019. Okay. I always give a big gap, yeah. right? So um, yeah. not <laughs> not because I don't want to say it really, but it's just because you never know what could happen. The reality uh, is, hey, yeah. there's there's uh, there's uh, holes that we have at the factory right. with every single car that we have to, to, to look th to do inspection yes. could be longer than usual. Okay. You, you can never know. So it's always okay. put a, 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 a bigger time. And you'll frame. be running the 62s in the same lines as uh, as the 40s. And oh, yeah, very. Correct? No, yeah. actually, a very good question. Okay. Uh, in Canada, it's going to be different. OK, OK, uh, we're going to offer the SV40, okay. the S62, the SV62 mm -hmm. and the SL62. Okay. That's our lineup. So for the 40 will come in the mid trim only. Correct. And then the E plus will replace the SL and yep. the lower trim. Correct. Uh, ah, that's strategic based okay. on the take rate of yes. uh, what we sold what in the 40 sells. kilowatt. Makes um, sense. Yeah, the challenge is always the that that um, that mix could could also change when we launch a 62 kilowatt. Mm. But still, uh, due to the fact that we sold more than 50 percent of our SVs um, of our 40 kilowatts as SVs, yes. it made sense to yep. keep the SV40. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly. Is that the same in the US as well, or are they going to are they doing something different as far as what model lines? Uh, in available? the US, it's all trims. So, so all three trims for yeah. both models. S40, both uh, SV40, okay. SL40. Uh, yep. So all six trims. Okay, right. great. So understand that, folks, in the US. You'll still get the S S V S L in the 40 and S S V S L in the 62. In Canada, it'll just be the S V model in the 40 and then the S S V S L in the 62. If I got that right, perfect. I was paying attention, even though they're taking yeah, tearing. There's a lot of noise here. Around us. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time I interview this guy, they're doing something around us. I don't know what. It's it is. true. First interview, there was uh, there was moving cars. Was, oh, <laughs> they moving were moving cars. cars. That's right. We they were moving cars. Good memory. Anyway. <laughs> Well, listen, as always, a pleasure. Thank you very much for enlightening us on news, uh, what's going on in Absolutely, Canada. it's always a pleasure. And we'll keep our eye on it. And I look forward to uh, some, doing some hot laps in this thing uh, at some point. For sure. And we need to go electric go-karting again. We do need to go electric go-karting. Guys, if you haven't done that, find a place local to you and do it. It's awesome. Absolutely. You. It's a lot of fun. And, and you don't stink like ga gasoline no. after a few laps. So it's, a, it's beautiful. That's true. Right. Thank you, as <laughs> always. Merci beaucoup. Cheers. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Right, guys. Well, I'm here at the Kia booth, and I have. Uh, it's it's really a thrill to be able to meet Reg. How are you, Reg? Thank very you good very yourself. For taking the time. We started talking before we started filming, so I got all excited about this interview. But he really knows his stuff. Now in Detroit, you guys saw me with James Bell and the uh, the Kia uh, Nero EV. Uh, but today, I want to focus on the Soul because I didn't really talk much about it. And now they have one here that I'll climb into, and you'll see some some intermixed video throughout this interview. But Reg really knows his stuff, and thank you very much for taking the time. You're to very talk welcome. To me. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So, uh, t what can you tell us about the new Soul uh, Beyond? You know, we were starting talking about some really deep battery stuff and, and the way you guys handle thermal management and I want to get into that but maybe give us a quick overview on your take of the new Soul. Okay well the new Soul 2020 basically uh, we took our new Soul platform so it is a little bit larger inside a little more spacious but we wanted an EV for today. So yep. what do EV customers want for today? Well, definitely a longer range. Mm -hmm. So what we've done here, um, the official is not yet here, but if you take a look behind you, it says up to 385 uh, kilometers, so mm -hmm. the range. Mm -hmm. So we have a 65 kilowatt battery. It's about in, 240 miles, 225 or yeah, something like yeah, that? Yeah, above that. Yeah, okay. So we have a 65 kilowatt battery in this car. Yep. So okay. it's still positioned in the same place under the car, so you have mm -hmm. your full trunk space, a very low center of gravity, really nice, and improved battery cells. And right now we're shooting for 385 kilometer range, and nice. that's real world range. That's not tested by us, that's tested by the Canadian government, the EPA. Right. And these are the same packs that are in the E-Nero or Nero EV Yeah, it's well. the exact correct? same yes. pack that's okay. in the Nero. Mm -hmm. and the Nero officially is 385 kilometer range. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, also, we've done some nice uh, new features inside for safety, uh, avoidance, collision, mm -hmm. lane, uh, okay. keep assist, all these things. And also, we have our fifth generation navigation. The mm -hmm. cool thing about mm -hmm. this yeah, on, explain that. You were telling on me a little uh, bit earlier, one, yeah. is a lot of people will buy EVs. It's their first EV. They're not sure how to drive an EV. It drives a little differently. And if you know how to drive, if you're an EV driver, you can really maximize on that range. Mm -hmm. So our fifth generation navigation, which is standard in our EV sold, no matter which trim you get, mm -hmm. 
to input your address in. Now the car, the navigation software is going to take a look at all your speed limit, your stops, your turn, but the topography of the mm. land too, hills, wow. uphill, downhill. Interesting. Now the car is going to coach you. Okay, it's going to come up with messages when to take your foot off the gas to go into regenerative mode, okay. how to accelerate up a hill, take your foot off the hill. So now it's going to maximize how you drive. The great thing for our customers, what they won't realize is that they are actually learning to how to drive an EV, how to maximize right. their range. That's right. And a lot of time, as you know, if you're a good EV driver, mm -hmm. you'll leave point A, you'll get to point B, you'll look at your range and go, hey, I have more range now than mm -hmm. I did when I left. Or I didn't use as much as I thought I was going to use. Exactly, yeah. because yeah. you're doing it properly. Mm -hmm. Also, if you drive an EV properly with this coaching, there's a lot less wear and tear on the brakes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the car slows down itself. So it becomes a lot of fun to drive to because the car is interactive with yes. you. So that one is the big thing here we've, we've and that, done. And that's kind of beyond what Nissan started with the Leaf, the original Leaf with the tree kind of system where you build these trees. And this we have the same the thing. Yeah. So yes. this is just taking yep. it to the next level. Okay. We do have the trees and all that yep. too, which mm -hmm. is fun to yep. look yep. at. Uh, we do have, uh, you know, and the mapping on your navigation that shows you when you're in regen, okay. what's powering the car. Or, you know, all these things are still there, but mm -hmm. we went that one step further. Mm -hmm. And one thing I wanted to focus on as well was the thermal management that you guys offer. You were yes. starting to explain some yeah. stuff and I so, thought I hadn't heard before, so maybe you could go yeah. through that. So basically, uh, any EV car, mm -hmm. the battery pack, a lot of people mm -hmm. think in Canada it's the cold that affects them. Cold mm -hmm. does not affect these batteries. Mm -hmm. What these batteries don't like is heat. Right. Other um, than range drop, but you're yeah. talking about damage to the battery. For dense so yes. reliability, yes. Uh, the time of life of, of that battery. Mm -hmm. So basically, we say, okay, we're starting to have customers that use them for taxis. So mm -hmm. they don't just yep. use a level one charger at right. 120 or a level two, which is fine. That will not damage the batteries. Mm -hmm. But if you constantly use the level three, the large chargers, yes. the industrial chargers, the faster you charge a battery, think think of your uh, mm -hmm. computer at home or your phone. If you yep. charge them fast, what happens to the battery? It yeah, heats up. They get hot. Um, it does not kill the battery. What it does, it takes a little bit of life away from the battery. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we says, what can we do at Kia to improve that? So what we've done now, instead of just having air basically cooling this battery okay. pack under yep. the car, it's a sealed unit, mm -hmm. we are running coolant lines through it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we have a dual stage. Mm -hmm. So basically we can run a single coolant through our heat exchanger that mm -hmm. we use for the uh, control modules under the hood and the electric motor and okay. all that. So that will keep it at a certain temperature. If the car notices you're on a level three charger mm -hmm. or you're in a heavy regen, which mm -hmm. the electric motor becomes a big generator yes. alternator, mm -hmm. we can open this valve and we have a two-step system. Now the air conditioning system mm -hmm. part, that heat pump now, mm -hmm. cools the battery pack also. Okay. So you can have moderate cooling or a little more heavy cooling or more uh, you know, intense cooling to make sure that that battery pack stays at a stable temperature. And that's all automated by the car itself. This is right? all controlled mm -hmm. by the car. Yep. We have mm -hmm. uh, temperature sensors. Yep. We take a look when we regen. It's okay. all controlled electronically. Ah, excellent. And that will help obviously for you to maintain a, a um, a high manufacturer warranty that pretty well everybody's exactly. coming out with. I think you have an eight year as well warranty on the pack and exactly. so forth. Exactly. Right? Well, that's good to know that uh, you've offered that features. Uh, as we talked about just before we filming, you know, having that larger battery, having a bigger motor in this package versus what was there. If you've driven the old Soul, it's not a, not a slouch. It's a pretty neat no, car. No, it's really cool. Uh, this is really going to fly uh, pretty well. Do you have any specs yet on zero to sixty, zero to one hundred? No uh, specs okay. yet. It's still mm -hmm. being uh, being uh, tested. Um, it's a nice package. Any idea when these are going to be available on the uh, We're looking around April. Around April time yeah, frame in Canada April time. and U.S. Is it a uh, similar in launch? In Canada right now, similar launch. Yes. Okay. And any idea of price points yet on these? Has not it been yet. Announced Nothing yet? has okay. been announced yet. Okay. Uh, it's still we're trying to get the best price possible yep. to be the best value on the market to mm -hmm. give our customers, you know, uh, the best service. Yeah, appreciate that. Well, we'll keep our eye out for pricing on that and the, I don't think it's been announced yet on the uh, Kia Nero as no, well? No, not, not yet. Not yet? You okay. will so probably be... see prices arriving mid-March. Mid-March, okay. And the cars mm -hmm. should be arriving in the dealers around April. And it's one plant that's making these. I'm not sure if the Seoul falls into that category. Yes, yes, it's the same, same thing. So yes, it's the same, same Korean plant yeah. that's making yeah. these. So it's going to be a bit of a constraint uh, allocation yeah. issue for the little bit. Do you see that as well? Um, 
We were promised that because yeah. Canada is a very, it's a really uh, uh, resurging market for EVs. Mm -hmm. Like we're really growing, especially in the Quebec province. Yes. Huge infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, and you have incentives, but that's another story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That, yeah. Hopefully that will change. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but we were promised we will get the amount of electric vehicles we need. Okay. Uh, we're maybe not the largest uh, Kia market, but we're a very important Kia market. Excellent. Okay. Well, I wish you guys all the best. Thank uh, you very success. much. And before we, I let you go, um, now my, my fans know that a couple of shows ago I had created a new kind of award for my show, I'm, I'm coming up on my one year anniversary in April for doing the show. Great. And uh, I looked at all the EVs that are out there in the marketplace uh, and I picked the uh, Kia Nero EV or the uh, e Nero, uh, depending on what side of the pond you're on, as my pick for the 2019 EV uh, well, of the year. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's and I wanted really to give you this, it. so hold on okay. one sec. I got a certificate here. Yay. Love when we do things live. So here's uh, just a nice little uh, accolades from the EV Revolution show for the Kia Nero EV e Nero uh, 2019 EV of the year. As my well, pick. thank I, you know. very much. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It makes our brand very, very proud. And uh, one thing with the Kia brand, we're always trying to get better constantly. Absolutely. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. Okay. All right. Take, Take care. care. Bye, -bye. Bye now. A couple of things to point out. It's got a brand new display. It's a 10.4 inch display, which is apparently the biggest on the market, at least for this class of vehicle. Uh, and it can, it can be split up actually into three views. You can look at your navigation, you can look at uh, stats, and then you can look at a radio function as well. So it's got a unique feature that you can split view the screen uh, for looking at different elements. Uh, it looks like a redesigned cockpit from that perspective, and uh, it's got uh, nice back seat room. Again, this whole platform uh, is apparently a little bit stronger. It's got a little bit better, a little bit better workmanship, so to give you a little more value. Uh, a little better from squeaks and rattles and that kind of stuff. I wasn't uh, familiar with the older Soul, uh, whether or not that was an issue for it or not, but apparently they've revamped that process just to make it a little bit tighter and nicer experience for clients. So, uh, you know, really nice uh, seating position in the vehicle. It's got all the appointments that you're going to need from an electric vehicle uh, viewpoint and use case with all the, you know, not a good combination of buttons and some touch screen capabilities.
All right, guys, well, I'm excited to be here at the Mercedes booth to finally see the EQ in person. Uh, I've only been seeing it in web pages. Thanks, guys, no problem. <laughs> when you're doing live stuff, it happens. Uh, and I'm here with Matt. Thanks, Matt, for taking the time to speak to me today. Not a problem. Now, he's the Can Canadian product manager for the EQ division. Did I get that right? That's Can I promote you to president, maybe? You know, maybe eventually. Whoever's listening, this guy deserves it. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for taking the time. Can you tell us a little bit about the car? Because I've really only just seen what's on the web and what's been at some of the European car shows. Most definitely. Yeah. So this is the EQC 400, and it's the first time we've got it on Canadian soil here in Canada. Excellent. And it's our very first all-electric vehicle under the EQ brand in the Mercedes-Benz lineup. Uh, so it's got two electric motors, okay. one at the front axle, one at the rear axle, and they combine to give it 402 horsepower wow. okay. and 564 pound-feet of torque. That's why we love EVs. It's that uh, torque, right? Beautiful yeah. wow, torque. And torque. The way I like to explain it, and I'm sure your viewers know very well, an EV is kind of like a crossbow. It's locked, loaded, ready to go. You push the pedal and it takes off immediately compared to a gas vehicle where when you push yeah. the pedal, it's kind of like yeah. a bow and arrow. you got to get locked and loaded and pull it back before you can go anywhere. It's a great analogy. I'm going to steal that from you and use that. That's good. Feel Thank free you. to. Appreciate that. Yeah. So yeah, dual motors, all-wheel drive, so we're going to have great handling because of EV with the low center of gravity and the battery pack, that skateboard type design. Yep. Handling should be very good for a, a, a vehicle of this class. The handling dynamics are fantastic. Uh -huh. It'll feel very, very comfortable and very nice while you're driving well, it. Well, it should. It's a Mercedes, right? I mean, Most you know, definitely. Way, you guys. Uh, how big is the battery pack? Any idea of range, estimated range yet? Yep. So it's an 80 kilowatt hour 80 battery okay. pack. Mm -hmm. And the estimated range, we have European standard right now, which yep. is 450 kilometers. Okay. And EPA standard will be available probably close closer to the end of the year. So that European's based on WLTP? Uh, it's actually NEDC. NEDC, okay. So they're a little aggressive in, in kind of giving it to, you said, what, four and change? Yeah, 450. 450. So it's probably safe to say probably in the 350 to 380, 390 range. We can estimate. Probably not a bad idea, at least at this point, and then we'll wait to see what officially announced. So 80 kilowatt hour charging, um, does it have act active battery management in that? So liquid cooling or any other uh, mechanisms? It does. So the system is actively cooled or heated to get to optimum temperature. Again, to, to get to the, uh, uh, the best range possible for the vehicle. Right. And as part of that, we have something called preconditioning with the vehicle. So when the vehicle's plugged in, uh, you can set it to be ready to go in the morning, and it'll have the battery up to optimal temperature. Mm -hmm. So you're not actually wasting the battery charge to get to that temperature, and ultimately helps with efficiency once the battery's to. And you'll have an app for that, as everybody does as well. We definitely uh, onboard will. Onboard charger is that an 11 kilowatt charger, or what's the charger? On yep. That? So we're initially going to launch with a 7.4, but the 11 okay. will be available shortly after launch. Okay. And will that be an upgrade, or that'll just be you'll start with the 7.4 and then you'll change it to 11? Is yeah, that we'll, we'll make both available. Make both available. Okay. So standard. Then then uh, for an 80 kilowatt hour at 11, you're probably looking at about a five hour, six hour level two-ish kind of thing. And yep. then Long level two, so yep. we'll start out with the 7.4, it's around mm -hmm. eight hours, that'll come down when we add the 11 kilowatt. Great. And then of course, when you go to a level three supercharger, yep. you're mm -hmm. looking from 10 to 80% at about 40 minutes. Okay. And what's the highest maximum throughput you think uh, you could put through this on a DC fast charge? Um, uh, I mean, you can go it's as high as you like. It's up to 100? Rated or? up to 150, I believe. 150, so depending on, obviously, if it's one of the new Ionides in Europe or maybe the Electrify America or it'll work for those. ones, Canada yep. ones, yep. It'll, so, but it should be able to get close to 100 or in that range anyway yep. to be able to top you up pretty quick. Um, now, I haven't been able to look inside yet, but uh, this is a... a, a Five passenger, or does it have a third row as well? Yep, it's a five passenger. Mm -hmm. uh, there's okay. no third row to third okay. row available. Yep. Uh, for viewers that aren't familiar with the nomenclature for Mercedes Benz, this is the EQC, mm -hmm. and it pretty much lines up size wise to our GLC lineup. Okay. So yep. it's a compact SUV. Okay, excellent. And from a price point perspective, do you have any uh, pricing has been released yet on that? Uh, pricing has not yet been released, okay. uh, mm -hmm. but it will be available come start of 2020. Same timing when the vehicle will be available in the Canadian and market. I was just going to ask you that. So you had mentioned before we started filming that in Europe, these things will start delivering, hitting the streets probably the latter part of this year, late fall, early winter yep. of 2019. And then in uh, Canada and I guess Europe, uh, sorry, USA as well, North America. Yep. So the North American launch will we'll launch at the same timing as the U.S. Okay. and be available early 20. 2020. Okay, great. Well, sorry guys, again for the background stuff. That's what happens when you're doing things uh, during media day here. All kinds of stuff happens. Anyway, it's a, it's a beautiful vehicle. I wish you guys all the best of success, and I look forward to seeing one in the fall when you guys have some here to, for us to look at. Thank you. All right, thanks, Pleasure man. to meet you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys, my last stop today at the Canadian International Auto Show is at the Genesis booth, and they unveiled their new electrical concept car, which I'm so excited about. This is a, just a fantastically gorgeous car. I'm here with Patrick, who's going to tell us all about it. Hi, Patrick. Thanks very much for taking the time 
The My chat pleasure. Would be as Thank well. you. What can you tell us about this gorgeous looking vehicle? So this is the Essentia. It is mm -hmm. a concept vehicle from Genesis, and it is in the format of a Gran Turismo EV coupe. Wow. So those classic GT proportions, yes. the beautiful long hood, the extended wheelbase, yeah. the swept back roof line, the gargantuan rear wheel arches, <laughs> all of those great things. But of course, with an EV propulsion system. Who would have thought of an EV, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I mean, the beauty of an EV is it can be effective or efficient, but it can also be fast. True, absolutely. Um, so, you know, as much as there's a story here with the EV, uh, what this car really is is more of a rolling canvas. Okay. It's um, mm -hmm. almost a canvas upon which rests the DNA of our future design direction. So Excellent. a lot of the elements that you see on this vehicle will make their way onto future Genesis production models. Okay. And on the EV side of things, I can say that there will be EV Genesis models in the okay. uh, not too distant future. So within the next two to five years is probably a safe I'll path. leave that one to the imagination. Okay, yeah. so yes, sir, it could be enough. Any specs that you can tell us uh, that's in the concept? Um, uh, so again, because it's a concept vehicle, right. okay. we don't get into too much detail. Sure. Of course, uh, any such vehicle, if it did go to production, would be based yeah. on the latest and greatest technology at the time. Mm -hmm. But in the vision of our design team, this car would have a zero to 60 time of less than three seconds. So it wow. gives wow. you a sense of what we'd be looking for in terms of the electric motor that's output. That's ludicrous Tesla fast, so when you're into that uh, time. Uh, sir, that certainly is, yeah. Yeah, it is, absolutely. Well, listen, it's a gorgeous car. I'm really, really excited to see you guys get into the EV game. And I know that uh, through the quality and the process and the manufacturing strength that you guys have, you'll, you'll come out with some really great solutions. And we're looking forward to that. Anything else you wanted to say about the vehicle about or, or about your future electrification plans? Um, again, I can't get into any details okay. about our future product plans. Yeah. But what I can say is that Genesis is committed to the highest possible standards of vehicle design and engineering and yep. what we've seen thus far with all of our products is that they all ride on custom built platforms designed specifically to be used in luxury products. Mm -hmm. They're built in their own dedicated factory and that same a meticulous attention to detail and dedicated engineering will apply to any vehicle we build in the future including EVs. Wow, beautiful. Well, thank you very much for your time. My Appreciate pleasure. it. Thank you very much. Stuff. Yeah. Okay, guys, well, I'm done wrapping up the uh, Canadian International Auto Show here in Toronto. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. There's going to be a, actually a military vehicle presentation coming on here, which is pretty cool. But anyway, hope that was a good overview of some of the stuff that uh, wasn't in Detroit. I wanted to kind of cover different stuff. I'm very excited about the electrification presence. It's much more prevalent here in Toronto than it was in Detroit. Uh, I can certainly say that, and Toronto has been at one of the forefront runners of promoting electrification for the last few years, at least since I've been coming back to the show these last four or five years. So it's great to see. Uh, hopefully you got uh, some cool views of some of the vehicles here. Where that Genesis one was, that's kind of took my breath away. That was kind of the showstopper for, for this show. Uh, I have to admit that, uh, just a beautiful concept. Again, it's 100% it's concept. What you see there was probably not going to go in production, but you know, something of a similar design from a coupe certainly could be. So anyway, thanks for tuning in to this episode of the EV Revolution Show. I very much appreciate it. All my uh, contact information will be in the end credits coming up. Of course, I want to thank all my Patriot supporters and, uh, and all my viewers for tuning in. And until next time, everybody, please stay safe and we'll see you then. Take care.